Okay, if you are following along on Crowdcast, you can click the polls button on the bottom of the screen. And I've asked what kind of crafts do people want to make in the future as part of our Crafter Noon programs. And if there's not something there you want to see and you want to shout it out on the comment section on the side, that would be great. So we're going to begin in just a moment. Okay, I think we're good. So hi everybody and welcome to Crafternoon. This is the first Crafternoon we're doing virtually. Um, I'm Olivia, I work for Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And I usually am the digital librarian, so I don't get to do very much in terms of analog crafts. Um, so it's kind of exciting and a little bit funny that today we have to be virtual, but we get to do something with our hands. So I'm excited that people showed up. I um, would love to know a little bit about who is here and what kind of crafts you normally make, if you um, have made a book before, if this is something that um, you're doing for the first time you're excited about, let me know. Just for those who are tuning in and don't know what we're making, we're gonna be making mixed paper journals. You can use the chat on the side of the screen on the right side to uh, let me know your name and if you have experience doing these things and what you're excited for today. And for those just tuning in, I asked in a poll, which you can access on the bottom of the screen, what kind of crafts you'd wanna do in the future, it looks like. We have a couple of people interested in paper crafts, a couple of people interested in sewing, in uh, kid-friendly crafts. So this is something that you can do with the whole family that we're doing today. Um, you know, uh, we have, there's a little bit of needle and thread work, or you can use a stapler, but it's super simple and you can make it as complicated as you like. Looks like we have some first timers in making journals. Seems like Michelle says that she would like to know how to make a book cover. You knew many years ago and you forgot. Um, so these are gonna be kind of floppy books, but it will be, that's definitely something we can probably do in the future. Okay, so if you guys wanna let me know more about yourselves and what you're interested in in the side while it, we uh, get started, that would be awesome. Uh, so I'll start with an example of what we're gonna make today and then we can talk about supplies. So I was thinking, cause I have been, you know, a little stressed out and stuck in the house. It's a, a different world from <laughs> what we were all living a couple weeks ago, uh, that it would be nice to do something that uh, gives us room to reflect moving forward. So we're doing uh, mixed media journals. This is based on a craft from Creative Bug Tutorial, uh, which is on the bottom of the screen. You can click that link to learn more about Creative Bug. But the nice thing about these journals is that it's not a one and done craft. At the end of the day, you can use it to um, have somewhere to reflect moving forward or uh, use other Creative Bug tutorials on art journaling and use it to just have a way to creatively express yourself uh, while you're at home. There are also something you can teach other people to make or make for specific purposes if you want. So this book I have here, let's see, is uh, just a teeny tiny little book. This is actually a tea bag that I liked. I put some stickers on it. So this I wanted to use as um, like a little place to uh, maybe like write some reflections. Some of the paper I used in here, this is from uh, a magazine. This is scrap paper, it's computer paper. And some of the paper in here is also just from like a notebook. 
the tea bag was a little floppy, so I used some tape on the inside just to make it a little stiffer. I just used stickers on the cover. So uh, you can use pretty much any kind of paper for these books. I think it's really fun to use something like a newspaper or an old magazine to just like have something uh, a little, getting a piece to show you, a little stimulating on the inside. And even if it's like this piece has is all black, I can paint over that and draw on top of that in the future. You can even use uh, note cards or uh, paper you've written on before and use something like watercolor to work over it. So the first supply is paper. The second one is paper for the cover. You're gonna want that to be a little stiffer. So you can use something like a cereal box, which is I might use today. You can use a note card. This one's from my mom and I like it. So maybe I'll reuse it to make a little notebook. Uh, you can even use, what's this? This is from my coffee filter. Put some of these supplies here so you can take a look. So you just want it to be a little stiffer so that it can withstand being in your bag or um, you know, being carried around. You can use other paper if you want, just like a thinner paper. But I, uh, I recommend looking for something thicker, digging through your recycling bin if you're lucky enough that you haven't just taken it all out. I had to uh, banish some cereal into a jar to get the cereal box, but it'll be worth it. A couple other supplies you will want to have is a pair of scissors. It would help to have a straight edge like a ruler or even just the edge of a book or something. You don't need it though. You can totally just uh, wing it if you'd like. And you want to have stapler or needle and thread. I'll go through both options moving forward. Uh, you'll also want to have a paper clip or clothespin, even I have here a chip clip. Even use a hairpin, uh, whatever you have. It's not necessary, but it will help a little bit. So um, I think that's everything. Oh yeah, and if you wanna decorate your book moving forward, you can uh, get some stickers, um, have some tape, just cut things out. You know, whatever, if you're a scrapbooker, um, those supplies could come in handy. So before I move forward, does anyone have any questions? Do we have anyone who's crafting along right now? You're going to try. That sounds awesome. And this video will be on our YouTube, our Facebook uh, in the future. So if you uh, don't get it all done today and you want to um, reference it in the future, you can either uh, visit Creative Bug below and visit their tutorial on the same project, or you can check our YouTube and watch it there. All right. So I am going to get started. The first thing that I recommend is choosing, having a little bit of a vision for what you wanna make. So choosing a size for your book. This can be based on the paper that you're using on the inside or the cover. Um, let's see, I want to use this card. So I'm going to make sure the book is, um, get my ruler here. It's a little over four inches and little over five inches. I think some of the pa paper I wanna use is a little bit smaller than that. Let's see. Oh wow, it's the exact same size. I didn't plan that, but it makes me look really good. So I am going to, let's see. I'll be measuring everything against the size of this card in order to make the sketchbook. So, let's see. What paper will I use? I have some colored computer paper. I guess I'll get a couple different colors here. And I'm gonna wanna cut these down to the size of the card. I am gonna fold it first.
And let's see. If I fold it this way, I might be able to get two. Okay. I folded it hamburger style. Let's see. It's like the short way. But if I fold it the long way, it looks like I might get be able to get twice as much paper into this book. So at this point, you can cut it with scissors, or if you want to deco the edge, you can actually just rip the paper. So just fold it. Old wrapping paper sounds like a great idea. I have some here as well, so I'm going to put that into the book as well. All right, and I'm going to actually just go to enlarge this. Let's see. Enlarge my hands so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just tearing this paper. I'm going to use my straight edge. And you can wing this if you like a wilder edge. I'm just going to rip it along here. And then I have sort of a nice textured edge to my paper. And I guess I want it on all sides of my book. So I'm going to, let's see. Just rip it along the edge. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. I kind of like the natural look, so I'm not doing as much measuring. Okay. So now I have the paper that I want to use, some of it. I'm also going to get some newspaper. Where did it go? There it is. And I kind of think for the newspaper, I like how it looks without being torn. So I might have some pages with that decalade edge and some without. I'm just going to trim this so it's about the same size. Again, you can measure, but what I think is nice about these books is kind of their handmade and um, recycled looking quality. So it's, uh, it's all up to you. So I'm going to alternate these pages because I like the look of that. And if your kids are not going to school, this might be a good time to just steal some of their notebook paper because you probably bought it anyway. I cut these down so you can see the deckled edge, but then these are sort of hidden on the inside. Okay, let's see how that looks. It looks pretty good, and I'm just going to get some of this wrapping paper here. And I know it's crumpled, but again, I obviously kind of like the scrappy look of it. So it's not that big piece out of the way. Maybe I'll make this sort of my inside cover. I can even turn it inside out. It's the white on the outside. Okay. You can get as nitpicky as you want here. All right, so the inside of my book is ready. At this point, I'm going to select the cover. I can use either this card or 
Maybe I will cut out the cereal box so you can see what it would be like here. All right. So I'm going to cut out a part of the cereal box where there isn't any perforation or folds. going to measure roughly the size of the book. I'll just take one piece of paper that's about the size that I want. Let's see. And I will use that to measure the size of the cover. You can make the cover a little bigger, a little smaller if you uh, want to change sort of how the book pages are sort of displaying. Okay, let's see. I'm just the pen marking the corners so that I don't have to hold the paper to it. And then we'll cut that. This will be nice because it'll let me. It'll leave me with a uh, sort of nice plain cover so I can do something fun on it. I've got my paper. How did I have this? Picture? Here's another book I made with um, the coffee filter box. This one I have, this one looks a little crazy, but um, I didn't have that much cardboard, so I used this tape. I thought maybe I'd paint over it. And um, I have this, it has this sort of cut corner, but I kind of like how that looks. So it's a kind of a wild looking book, but <laughs> I like it. All right, so here is my book. It's pretty much ready to be assembled. All right, so I'm going to, who here has a uh, needle and thread that they can use and who would prefer to use a stapler? You can uh, shout out in the chat or, well, I'm gonna show you how to do both, Just seeing what our, what our crowd is like. All right, we got one with a needle, Rachel with a needle and thread, Ella with a needle and thread, cool. You have both, but a stapler handy. Well, I'll show you the stapler uh, at the end, just so um, I prefer to do the needle and thread, but both um, both are fine. With the stapler, you'll just have to base your size of the book on the size of your stapler. So with the needle and thread, uh, what we need to do at the, first, uh, at the first part is just stabilize all the paper so that it's not slipping around when we're trying to sew it. So I'm going to get my chip clip I'm gonna put my chip clip on one side, making sure that all the paper is lined up the way I want it and making sure that everything is sort of in the, uh, um, the seam here. And I'm gonna take my clothes pin and put it on the other side. All right, and so now the paper isn't really able to shift around. So at this point, we're gonna wanna poke three holes in the, they call this the gutter of the book. So you, if you have something like an awl or another um, thick and pointy object, you can use that. You can use your needle, but it, I, um, it's easier with something thicker. So I'm actually gonna use a ballpoint pen. And this will leave a little dot, but I don't mind that. Um, if you have an awl, that's the best. Even something like, um, a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver could work. Uh, so you wanna roughly find the middle of the book for your first hole. 
So I'm gonna press that and you wanna be able to see the hole from both sides. So let's turn it around. I can't really see it, I'll try again. Oh, I heard it. Okay, so you can see the hole from that side. And then you'll wanna put two holes roughly in the middle of the two sides of this hole. So we have one here and another one here. Okay. All right, and you can see those both on this side. Let's see, there you go. How's everybody doing at this point? Everything makes sense? Cool, thank you. Ella, thank you, Michelle. All right, so you'll wanna get your thread. This thread is um, a book binding thread. This is waxed. If you have normal thread, you can wax it. You can, for this size, <laughs> size of the book, uh, you can just use regular thread, but the wax help it helps it not rip the paper. Um, Thank you, Ella, for the next step, stab the book, spoiler alert. Um, you can also, uh, what I used to do in school <laughs> was I would use, um, uh, what is it called, uh, floss <laughs> um, for your teeth. And uh, that is basically wax thread. You can get the, um, the unscented or unminted <laughs> floss, or you can, even use the minty floss, it does, it's not gonna go bad. Your book will just smell really good. So you wanna get about two times the size of the book and thread. Let's see, I'm gonna a little more than that three times because I like to have a little bit extra thread. Back. All right. And you'll want to thread your needle. And tie a knot in the end. Okay, just wrap it around your finger and roll it off. And especially with the, the wax thread or the, the floss, it will um, turn into a nice big plump knot, which is what you want. All right, there you go. So I have my needle and thread. I just tied it on the end. I didn't um, double it up. You can if you want, but this is nice and easy to get through those holes. And we're gonna start on the inside of the book. So if anyone is crafting along, take your needle and put it from the inside going out and pull it through nice and tight. And there's your little knot. Now we're on the outside of the book and oops, we will go back in from the inside, uh, oh, sorry, from the outside going in to the book and pull it nice and taut. All right, so now I have the book Half Sewn. At this point, you will want to go to the middle hole again, and if you can get in there, through with your needle, pull it through. So now you have a nice little loop. You're basically making a figure eight with your thread through the holes of this book. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's better than a stapler too. A stapler is, so Michelle said, that's cool. And I think better than a stapler. It does look a lot nicer. The stapler is nice if you are making a lot of books really fast, you're making a zine, but um, this definitely looks a little prettier and I think, um, it holds up really nicely too. So you wanna make sure it's taut on all the different sides so you don't have a floppy book. 
know this is hard to see because I chose a beautiful mustard thread that's exactly the wrong color for the video. And uh, once you pull it through, we want to finish our figure eight. Stick your uh, needle into that knot. Pull it through. Do it a second time. Stick it under thread. I'm just trying to tie it off nice and tight right now. Just wrapping the thread around itself and tying it off here. And again, the wax thread or uh, floss works really well because once there's a knot, it's not coming out. That was an unintentional pun, but I liked it anyway. You can cut off your thread. It's okay if you leave a little uh, little end because I think it looks good. And there you have it. I'm going to take these clips off. I'll put them back on the Fritos. So I have a little book here. You open it up. You can see my super healthy cereal options. I have my wrapping paper from Christmas. Some pages from the book review. Scrap paper from a notebook. So you have a lot of different things going on here, but uh, what I like about it is um, all the different materials just kind of inspire me to work different ways. I'm coming back because I miss you guys. I'm trying. Here we go. Hi. Um, you know, with, uh, like I was saying with the newspaper, I might want to paint over it so that I can, um, see what I'm doing with, uh, the, um, what is this wrapping paper? It's a little, uh, shiny. So maybe something like, um, paint wouldn't work as well on it, watercolor or a pencil, but I could do something with a Sharpie. So, um, I like how the book kind of encourages me to work different ways. So has anybody followed along and made a book? No pressure if you didn't. Um, I, uh, I don't fault you for it. But if you have anything made, um, we can try and share a screen. If not, no big deal. What I would, if you guys, uh, you didn't get done because you got caught up in watching. Well, I love that. If you make something and you want to share it with us, um, we are at PGC MLS on all social media. Um, and you can tag it, hashtag PGC MLS Crafter Noon. It's spelled <laughs> how it sounds. And that way um, we can see what books you made. At this point, um, when you finish sort of the basic lesson, you can pretty much go hog wild with whatever you want. I have some stickers, so I might, you know, write my name on there. I think at first I'm going to get maybe a pen, a marker, and some, some colored pencils, and maybe I'll just do, let's see, what else do I have over here? A couple of different things. Maybe like, since I didn't make it outside yet today, I'm thinking nature. Just something fun. And I can always um, come back and add more to it if I want. Maybe I'll get my initials here. And there we go. There's my little book. Again, like I was saying, this is super simple. You can elevate it any way you want. Um, you can print out a pattern and paste it on to your book if you'd like. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do, but it's also nice to keep it short and sweet and just let um, using the book be your creative practice. So I think with what I'm going to do uh, with my book is um, 
just maybe do some daily journaling just to, uh, you know, think about things going on in the world and also sort of open myself up to doing things that aren't just uh, my laundry and checking my email, which I definitely need <laughs> a distraction. Um, I would love to hear what people thought of this lesson and if you have any ideas about what you might want to do for craft room next week. One idea I was thinking about is if people enjoyed making books today, we could do um, more art journaling in the books that you make over the week, or um, we could do something entirely different. Let's see what else people said on the poll. Looks like a lot of people wanna do sewing and paper crafts as well. And one person wants some kid-friendly crafts. We can definitely do all of those things. So if anyone has any ideas about what they'd want to see, or if they would be interested in showing up for art journaling, um, you know, tea times moving forward, let me know. Uh, you can let us know in the comments section on the right there in the chat section if you're watching through Crowdcast. If you're watching through Facebook or YouTube, you can uh, leave us comments there or you can shout us out at PGCMLS on social media anytime. So I'm gonna hang out for a few more minutes to hear if you have any feedback about what you'd wanna do in the future. And if there's anything else, uh, any questions you have, uh, let me know and I will answer them in the next uh, few minutes while we're hanging out here. Okay, sounds like you guys are open to anything, which I appreciate. Thank you for coming, I really appreciated it. And I'm excited to uh, see you guys in the future. Also, if you follow this channel, you uh, will get notified when we have other events. We have um, online story times for families, uh, digital demos of our online resources, and um, share outs with our CEO weekly, just convert the community conversations. And we have a lot more going on. So definitely follow us. That would be great. Thank you. If you're watching in Crowdcast, uh, Steve just dropped a link to our virtual events in the chat. And if you click that, you can see all the virtual events we have coming up. And we, you know, are still brainstorming new things. So if you have any recommendations that you'd like to see in the future, let us know. Um, we want to make sure that the PG Samuels community feels supported and uh, enriched at this time. All right, thank you so much, everyone, and have a beautiful day. Don't forget to click the button underneath to go to the PGCMLS Creative Suite, access Creative Bug, where this craft was from, and learn about more creative things you can do for free online from PGCMLS. Thank you.